Little leaves are fun to make, and so are little hooks. So why not combine the two? Welcome to Black Bear Forge, where I hope to educate, inspire, and spark the imagination of anyone interested in the art and the craft of traditional blacksmithing. So today I thought we would do just that, combine a leaf with a hook. This isn't my idea. Lots of people make little leaf end hooks like this. Lots of opportunity for self-expression, relatively small amount of materials, simple tools, forge, hammer, anvil. You'll need a chisel if you want to put veins in the leaf or a small fuller and maybe a little v-block or some other tool to help shape the leaves although there's other ways around that and a small cross peen hammer really helps there but that's really about all you need so let's head over to the forge and let's get started this is one of those projects that you can do out of just about any size material just depending on how large of a hook you want or how large of a leaf you want today I'm working in 3 8 round bar and we're going to start by putting a very short point on and we're going to work right at the edge of the anvil and it's just a little short square taper at this point Then we're going to turn the diamond up, so one of the, the edges or corners of the square taper are up. And we're going to work half face blows on the joining sides. So two sides are up and we're going to create a, a neck there. It sounds like it's starting to rain. I'm going to take this down fairly thin but don't take a chance on getting it so thin it breaks and then bring this taper back. This is the stem of your leaf and what gives the leaf its graceful look. A leaf on the end of a blunt stick doesn't look so good. So we're going to take another heat or two and clean this taper up through here and then round it up. I'm going to taper this back from the shoulder of the leaf about five inches to where I'm in my taper. And that's just what I feel like doing. You need more than you might think to get that circle at the top of the leaf to look right, or at the top of the hook. Now I'm going to go to octagon. That's a square taper. Now we go to an octagon taper. And don't let it get too cold or you can create a stress crack right there. And if the edge of your anvil is sharp, you'll get a stress crack. And now that it's octagon, we'll round it up. I'm going to start here at the skinny end where it's going to cool the fastest. And that way, once it starts to cool, I won't be hammering on that. And that'll reduce the risk of creating a stress crack there. If you want a nice blend, you kind of want the the top of the hook, the round bar from the hook, to just look like an extension of the little branch the leaf is on. So for now, let's keep everything fairly straight. The next thing we're going to want to do is spread out the leaf. And when we do that, we're going to start with half face blows starting right at the edge of the anvil with the corner of the leaf facing up. So one of those sharp edges is what's up. And that leaves kind of a sharper edge on the edges of your leaf and the reason we do that on the diamond. So with a sharp edge up, just flatten it a little bit and then let's go to the cross peen hammer. Start right in the center and work towards one side. You might need to rotate it a little bit and then come to the other side. If it cools off, let's take a break and get it hot again. Spread that just a little bit more. And then we can go to the flat face of the hammer. And by tipping it a little bit, we can draw the leaf out longer. And just kind of 
work that till it looks like what we want. If for some reason you think that leaf is not symmetrical enough for you, let it cool and file it. Now using a chisel with a rounded edge, I'm going to start right at the point. And be careful, you don't want to split the point open. The chisel's so big it's hard to see. Sorry about the noise, I think it's actually going to hail out there. Kind of work the chisel back and make a central vein there. You can do a lot of this after this gets cold. But I'll take another heat just so we can see it easier on the video. But there's our, our central vein and we'll put some little side veins on there. Just do this nice and gently. You don't want to cut through. You don't need to put as many as a real leaf has in it. Real leaves have a lot more veins. You just want to create kind of a caricature effect that people recognize as being a leaf. The problem with this though is that that's awfully flat, boring, and uninteresting at this point. You can tell it's a leaf but we can make a way better leaf. This is something I have always worked in a V-swedge. You just put the leaf in there and you can work with a small cross-peen hammer. This little cross-peen, by the way, was made by Brent Bailey. If you're uh, really interested in hammer forging or big power hammer work, watch some of Brent's videos. He's really a skilled blacksmith, especially when it comes to the power hammer. But today, I'm going to use that little hammer and this little ball tool ball stake I guess you would call it that was made by Stephen over at Foxwood Forge in Florida and we're gonna try that out. This little tool really makes this easy we just use the cross pane and you kinda work down there and you can kinda add a little character there and just work it around however you want but by creating this three-dimensional effect, your leaf starts to look more leaf-like and not just like a flat piece of metal with chisel marks in it. This is really a good tool for this. So thank you, Stephen. I appreciate it. Now I want to bend this end around into a little loop. This will depend somewhat on how much material you left or tapered out, how big this loop gets. And you want the leaf to cross over the stem so that it's uh, on top of it and not pinned between the wall and the stem in the end here. So something like that. And what shape this takes exactly is just kind of up to your sense of artistry. And I think that's pretty good for now. Now we need to create a place for some screw holes. I want to come just below the leaf and I'm just going to create a little flat on the edge of the anvil. Move an inch or so and create another little flat. These little flats are just a place then that I can set this ball punch. Oh, I forgot to mention a ball punch when I talked about how few tools it's needed. Sorry. and try to create a very centered depression with the ball punch. These need to be in line if at all possible. You can always put a little twist between them if they aren't, but try to get them lined up. It's a little roly-poly and doesn't want to stay flat. Having a helper to hold this would be helpful. I find helpers are always helpful. But that's not true. Sometimes I just find they're in the way. Okay, so that creates two nice ornamental little spots that bulge out, be easy to drill through, and that's where the screws will go. 
And I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to kind of eyeball about four inches. It takes more to form a hook than you might think. And you don't want to create too much and have the hook come clear up by the leaf and cover your screw holes. So I want to make sure I leave plenty of material for the hook. Now we just want to draw a nice round taper on this. But again, start square. I want to go up about oh, three inches with this taper. That's just an aesthetic choice. Try and keep it fairly straight while you do this. And you want to go to octagon. And you round it up. This takes three or four heats. Take three or four heats. If this takes more than one heat, that's, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Make sure you get it nice and smooth and well rounded so it's a nice feeling thing. A whole bunch of flats and lumps and bumps are generally kind of distracting. Next thing I'm going to do is put a curl, little curl in but that tip is too cold. And the curl goes away from the front for something like this. And when you bend the hook that will be in the front. So bending the hook will be the next thing we want to do. Now you can bend this in a little jig like this if you want to. Nothing wrong with that, but better skill builder if we do it over the horn of the anvil. And I quench the little curl just to make sure that I don't mess it up. If you're making a lot of these, the jig makes sense. That's about the right size, but it's really kind of ugly. So if you put it up here and work down there, that really straightens that out nicely. We'll need to go back to the face of the anvil to clean that up just a little bit more. Kind of crooked and wonky, but we can fix that. So we can kind of straighten some of this out. A little bit tough there. But we're not quite in line everywhere, so I think we're going to need to go to the vise, and it's pretty easy, especially with round bar, to just twist it and get it in line. You'll never know it's been twisted. So we can stand this up in the vise with the hook between the jaws, and then look at our places for the bolt holes. And this stuff twists easily enough that we should be able to just grab it with a pair of tongs and twist it. You don't really need a special twisting wrench. That's pretty good there. Now it needs to be flat in the other dimension better. You can see it's a little bit kinky in here and that will do at the anvil. Plus then we can set the leaf a little bit better. So at this point I'm just taking all the kinks and the bows out and notice that the leaf is up off the, the anvil. In the long run I want the leaf down on the anvil or on the wall in the finished case so it's not sticking out to grab whatever you're hanging on the hook. So that can be a real problem. And the last thing to do is give it a quick wire brushing. Now if you like the bronze look or you want to make this look like a, a fall leaf and make it golden, as that cools down to black heat, we can go ahead and take a bronze brush and just lightly brush the leaf. You end up with that bronze patina. We've seen that before. So there is our leaf hook with everything but the holes to mount it with. Well, I hope you
you can hear me over the rain. Well, this cools off. I'm going to go ahead and put some wax on it. But I'm glad to have the rain, so hopefully it's not too distracting for you. It's been a long, hot, dry summer so far, and we'll take what we can get. I keep an old hot mill glove that's too thin for the for working for holding the wax stuff and it gets stiff it gets so much wax for that matter some of these little projects like this you can just wax by rubbing the glove over it after you've used it a while Well, there's our finished hook. It doesn't match the sample I did earlier because I didn't take any measurements. I was just doing these by eye at the anvil and having fun doing it. And if you don't need them to match, that's not a bad way to do it. If you need them to match, take measurements, take notes, and then cut all your bars the same, draw all your tapers out the same, put all your holes in the same place, and they'll be pretty close matches. There's still going to be some little artistry in the leaf and a little bit different shapes up here, but the lengths will be the same. And if you're selling them at craft shows and, and such, that might be the way to go. I just made these for the fun of making it. They don't really have any place they're going to go. Maybe they'll go on the Etsy shop as just a pair of mismatched leaf hooks. Who knows? Well, I had to put off finishing this video for about an hour while the rain let up, so it's been a great afternoon and a great rain. It's much cooler more pleasant smells fresh so we're glad to see the rain i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you can get out to your shop and make something whether it's leaf hooks or something else do watch some of the other videos when you have time share the videos with your friends but have fun stay safe and wear your safety glasses we'll see you for the next one